Hey, Carol. I'm just sharing all the places. Or spreading the joy or sprinkling or... All right. Now let me get into the live. Hey, Carol. Hey, Judy. Hey, Susan. Y'all, I was just talking to Mary, and um, hopefully she's okay with me saying this, but just be praying for her family. Send up some quick prayers. Um, I think that's all I'm going to say. I'll let her say anything else if she wants to when she gets on, but send some prayers her direction. Oh, she did post? Okay, well, um, her father-in-law, Lenny's dad, is not doing well, so um, they're just really worried, and, you know, it's just that that time in our lives where our parents start getting sick, and unfortunately, they, they start leaving. It's just like I lost my dad a couple, about a year and a half ago now, so it's just part of getting older, and it's the part of getting older that just sucks, but let's just pray for her and pray for Lenny and pray for their family and pray for the, the doctors to find the knowledge and find everything they need to, to take care of her father-in-law. How's everyone's day? How's everyone's day? I have a box here in front of me. Uh, this package has been, um, Hey Kathleen. Oh, good, good. Mary got some good news. Um, welcome, Kathleen. We were just saying, uh, a friend of ours, Mary, she should probably be on later. She needs some prayers, so send up some prayers her way for her and her family. But I've got a box here, y'all. It's my first shipment from a place called The Wreath Shop. Um, I was needing to find some more St. Patrick's Day stuff for... Uh, some wreaths that I've got yet to make for St. Patrick's Day. And y'all can see here the Hey Y'all wreath we're going to make here in a little bit. But let's open up this box. Let's see what we got. All right. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. Y'all, sometimes I get to order them and I forget what I ordered. Alright, I'm going to turn this box this way and get it out of our way. Oh, look at these picks. Look at these St. Patrick's Day picks. So y'all, what I do, I don't use the whole pick in one arrangement. Most picks are separated into threes. So what you do is you divide these out. Now, I don't have a stem cutter yet. It's on my wish list, but I'll use like this tool and then I'll snip these in three different places and use them on wreaths. That way one stem, because these stems can range anywhere between six, seven dollars up to 10, 12, 15 plus dollars. So you want to spread, spread the love, spread it out. All right, so I got some picks. Oh yeah, I got lemons. I forgot I got lemons, y'all. Remember I was showing y'all the um, lemon signs last night? So what I really like about these, A, again, a good pick's gonna come in three sections. So this one's got three different, three different sections on it as well. But it's got the little blossoms in addition to the lemons. Uh, you also have other foliage on here, so you get a lot of bang for your buck um, on this stem. Okay, so I found more of these signs, and y'all, this sign, I made a wreath with this sign, and it sold 
within less than 12 hours in my Etsy shop. But the place that I first ordered it from, they didn't have any more. So that's kind of what I did is I Googled and found a place that had these signs. And that's how I found the wreath shop because I wanted more of these signs. But in addition to the spring gnome, they had a bee gnome. Bees make life sweeter. So more bees. Aren't these cute? They're so adorable. And these are really good on another style wreath that I'm going to show you all that I was telling you all about last night. Uh, someone that I follow, Melissa Mora with Sincerely Created Mom. She makes the flat or the pancake style wreaths that I've learned how to make. So these go really well because they're thin. And don't tell Melly Mel that. Don't tell Melly Mel what? Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm not a fan of bees, but they sell. <laughs> All right. So we got some signs. And y'all, one of the things I've learned in my creative coaching group is multiples. Y'all are all creatives too, or most of y'all are creatives. And what we tend to do is, is make all of these unique items. Well, I learned in my business classes that we can't run a business on all these individual unique items. We have to be able to make multiple so that you can streamline the process more. So that's why I'm now learning to order twos and threes of signs and make you know several of the wreaths, same wreaths at the same time. All right, so let's see what good one I got. Oh, cute. Some St. Patrick's Day, more St. Patrick's Day ribbon. And if I'd have paid attention, I'd have known that I ordered that from another shop. Oh, look at this red and white buffalo check. Red and white, good Lord. Um, green and white. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? That's like an argyle. The white's got shimmer to it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the white's got a shimmer. Oh, good. I needed some more solid green. I was out of just solid green. Yes, Carol, red and white. Y'all, I have had like such a crazy busy day. Um, I mean, like literally in the last 30 minutes, I, on top of working all day with IT job and then um, conquering, somewhat conquering Pinterest. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, green is not my favorite color, Kathleen. Everyone can tell you here what my favorite color is. And I haven't designed anything with my favorite color in it yet. <laughs> my favorite color is blue. Is blue. Um, I absolutely love blue. So like y'all 30 minutes ago, I went upstairs, whipped together, uh, mushroom risotto, some steamed mixed vegetables and two delicious locally raised, um, T-bones. Right. Well, Kathleen, I've made four or five. St. Patrick's Day wreaths, and they're all gone but two. So I needed to make some more because they're just flying out of the store. Oh, and then I got some more lemon ribbon. Lemon, and see, it's got the, the flower blossom, fruit blossom, greenery with the black and white buffalo check. So this is a good box. Plus, I always make sure I order enough so that I don't pay shipping. That way I know that all of my prices are just based upon whatever I pay for. Carol, I, I have, except for the blue that's in the patriotic stuff that I've bought, 
I haven't had a holiday or a reason to buy blue. Well, I take that back, y'all. Let me show you what something blue I did buy. So in the world of Deco Exchange, which you'll hear me talk a lot about Deco Exchange, it's a supplier of a lot of the supplies that I get, as well as the owner of Deco Exchange, Damon Oates, he owns the creative coaching group that I'm in and the business coaching group that I'm in. I am Kathleen, so I use those discounts all over the place. So y'all, this is the blue that I've bought so far. So I bought this in blue, in lavender, in red, in cream, in yellow, in hot pink, and light pink. And I'm not sure if I saw, um, hey Fran. Um, this is, this is a floral and the skew on the floral, hey GK, the skew on the floral is 60919. And if you've ever watched any of the creative coaches or any of the other people, thank you, Fran, um, or watch Damon or maybe even other designers. This is like the, I finally have my hands on 60919. This is a floral that has like all the bells and whistles. It's got these beautiful paper flowers. Um, these, I don't know a lot about florals. I don't know a lot about flowers, uh, but it's got these little blueberries. It's got eucalyptus. It's got some fern. Um, it's just got all of the things and it comes in all these different colors. And there's just something about it that when it goes onto a wreath, no matter what kind of wreath, a grape mine wreath or um, uh, evergreen base type wreath or a mesh wreath, it just turns the wreath into something magical. So I'm still learning how to use all of this, but I wanted to get my hands on it while it was in stock because y'all, I'm telling you, I don't know, they got like 40, 60, Kathleen probably knows exactly, 80 pallets or more of this 60919. And it was gone in like 30 minutes. I mean, it was just, I think the first time it was gone 10 minutes. And then the second one, there was more and it was gone in like 30 minutes. So I'm excited to have my hands on 60919. Right. And if you're new to my page, uh, my name is John Norell. I am with Jane Norell Creations, and I'm so glad that you found me tonight. This is our second night going live, making a wreath. We went um, 40, cages of, 40 cases of each color. Wow, and it went that fast. Uh, hi, Alice. And I'm so glad that you're here. If you're new, uh, say hi. Tell us where you're from. All right, so those were the goodies that came today. And here lately, there's goodies that come almost every day. It's like Christmas here um, year round right now. All right, so we're going to get started on this wreath. So I was showing you all, this is the mesh that we're going to use tonight. This is our sign. We're going to be using a 15 to 25 inch raised wreath base uh, with the burlap colored tines and I haven't decided on ribbon yet. Sorry, someone was messaging me. Um, I'll have to message them back. So I pulled out all of my farmhouse ribbon. Pennsylvania. Well, welcome from Pennsylvania. I love it. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, in case you didn't know where I'm based out of. I love seeing Miss Alice on here, y'all. I worked for Miss Alice back when I was in 
uh, graduate school in the admissions department at MTSU. Um, she taught me a lot about admissions and us processing transfer students' transcripts and coding a transfer students' transcripts from other colleges. And um, we had a lot of fun those years I worked in, worked in admissions. So I've got this. I think this is going to blend in too much with the color of the mesh. But I do have this like grayish blue and black dot. I think that would look good. Um, I think that's going to blend in too much. But y'all look at this. We got to use this. So this is an, a new ribbon. So I couldn't get this right. How am I doing this? Ooh. Is this not cute? Y'all, now that I'm connected to all these different suppliers, there is so much cute ribbon out there. Oh my gosh, you remember my corn chowder? Oh wow. Tonight I made two inch, two or three inch thick ribeyes. Or no T-bones, they were T-bones. So look at this what delicious buffalo chat. We've got gray and white that I think would go well because you've got grays and browns in this wreath. I was going to buy some magnolias because I'm pretty sure those are magnolias. Are supposed to be like a gem magnolia, which is what I have in my backyard. And y'all magnolias... Well, what I'd have to price the wreath to put magnolias in this wreath, nobody would buy it because magnolia florals are crazy, crazy, crazy expensive. So tonight we're, we are going to be doing a little bit different. We're not going to do the funky bow. Tonight we're going to do an actual bow and hopefully Mary will, um, uh, Hey Emily. Oh, thanks Emily. All right, so I've already put our, um, oh, what are these called? Cable mounts on, I'd already put cable mounts on here, but I'll show y'all one night, we'll, uh, well, all I do y'all is I buy these cable mounts from Deco Exchange, and most of these materials, if you see anything that you like, like this sign is from Deco Exchange, I do have an affiliate link with Deco Exchange now, and it's just shoplikejohn.com. So if you go to shoplikejohn.com, uh, I'll make a little bit from your purchase, but like you can get these cable tie mounts, the mesh, the wreath bases, everything from Deco Exchange. So these are just little foam cable mounts. And what I do is I take, a, I take some Gorilla Super Glue and I put a dab of super glue each place I'm going to put one of these cable ties and then I remove the adhesive back. I put this over the super glue and then I take hot glue and put hot glue all around it. So basically what the hot glue is going to do is kind of melt that uh, foam to the metal in addition with the hot glue. Uh, well, I missed the hot glue on this one. Um, I can add it later. But um, just totally forgot about that. This one, um, I can come back and add the hot glue. But you just put the hot glue around it, and that should pretty well secure these cable ties to the metal sign, so that you know this sign is going to be out in the elements. So we want to make sure that it's going to hold on really well. All right. So tonight, I'm actually doing the style of wreath that I'm making tonight. Uh, we're going to just, it's just going to be ruffles. So we're going to put ruffles everywhere. Um, and the style of the wreath is a style that was developed by Tammy Harris Hodges with Polka Dot Wreath Co. So this is a style that has been selling really well for me. And it's a good medium price point wreath. Um, so... Uh, like last night's wreath, if you see it in my shop, uh, that is a 26 by 26 by 8 inch wreath. And it's priced, I think, at $139.97. Um, and this will be what is my $99 wreath. So $99.97 wreath. 
or 99.99 or eighth. All right, so we're gonna cut our mesh at 20 inches, and this is 10 yards, so that's 320 inches. We have 18 ties on our wreath, so we need 18 pieces at 20 inches. That's a whole roll. That's another thing that's easy about this wreath. You know you're using one roll of mesh. And I have not used this mesh before. This is a new one. And it's got, what I liked about it is, uh, these are called cotton drift or mesh or, what do they call it on here? Drift mesh. And so it's got almost, it, it, it's, it looks like cotton. Like cotton is just right in, woven into the mesh. This is a burlap. Even though they're the, this part is plastic, there are actually woven in strips of burlap twine into the mesh in addition to the cotton mesh. And um, they call this window pane because it looks like window panes. So, and it's soft, it's really soft. It's very thick. So it's really gonna make a beautiful wreath. I haven't seen it in the 21, well, let's see. No, I think, I haven't seen it in the 21 inch. All right, we're gonna square off our end. So we're doing 28 inches, y'all. The thing about these mats, yes, they are self-healing, but let me show y'all. They're self-healing, but when you're making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cuts, so this is 26. So the end of this mat is, the end of this mat is 36 inches. So 10 inches in would be 26. My 26 is about beat to death. So I learned from watching another wreath maker that you just move it up an inch and then you start cutting, you start cutting at 25. No, I'm sorry, uh, 15, because we want 20 inch. So there's one. So what's great about when you're using the whole roll, you don't really even have to cut or count. You definitely have to cut. Anybody do anything fun today other than go to work? Oh, I forgot to tag Tammy. I think she wanted me to let her know when I went live. If I went live again. Oh, God. She's busy. she got a lot going on. And Kathleen, I was supposed to message you too, and I forgot. <laughs> but I'm glad you saw that I went live. Oh, thanks, Emily. So, are any of y'all, have any of y'all um, ever dealt with the VA in terms of either you deal with the VA yourself for healthcare or you have a loved one that you're taking care of that had VA health insurance? Your dad used it. Well, <clears throat> my father-in-law, who we take care of, he was a veteran. He served during Vietnam. He first served in the Air Force as a firefighter and then went back and re-enlisted uh, towards the end of Vietnam, right after Vietnam and served in the Marines as a firefighter. And so 
obviously he has VA health insurance in addition to Medicare and all the fun parts of Medicare. So when he first came to live with us, it was a lot to figure out. A, taking care of him and then figuring out the VA system and the Medicare system. And, and that's a story for a different day. But so this morning, this is, this is how the VA operates. So a few months ago, he, I guess we started in the fall. Um, he's pretty much a hundred percent bedridden now. So, um, we don't, we can't really get him out of the house and transfer him in our vehicle anymore. So I started the process of getting him signed up for home-based health care, uh, which is a great program. I call it the VA's Doctor on Wheels. And all of his doctors now come out here, the nurses, the doctors, um, whatever kind of doctor, physical therapists, speech therapist, psychologist, social worker, they all come out to the house for him, which is wonderful. Except here's here's the advance notice that they give you that um, it's time for a meeting. So they have to meet with him every couple, like every two or three months. So this morning, the nurse practitioner calls me and is like, this is maybe about 10, 1030. Uh, can you have Mr. Hill ready for a teleconference, you know, video chat at 230? I need to meet with him. Uh, it's been... 60 days or 90 days or whatever. Um, sure. Yes. Let me just rearrange my whole day. Give him very short notice. Um, if there's one thing I've learned about, well, I mean, Larry's, uh, he has survived several different ailments, but his routine is very important to him. So like he has afternoon shows, he has morning shows. He has, we know that, what his day is like. So I'm like, oh, great. We're going to have to interrupt some show for us to do this web chat at 2.30. So what I've learned is it's better to just, um, well, here's the, if you, if you can see, the lock is perfect right at the end of the roll for the last one. So I just now know, like, surprise, I'm coming in on the, with the phone from the VA. And so we had our call, but that's literally the notice that they, they give you. It's like, whether it's a PT, whether it's his nurse practitioner, whether it's a nurse, whether it's a social worker, hey, we're going to be there in an hour, or we'd like to be there in two hours. <laughs> but it's all right. We're just thankful. We're thankful that he doesn't have to go out anywhere. All right. So I'm going to move this over here. I wish I could feel this mesh. It's like moving clouds. So tonight we were cur last night we were curling. Tonight we're gonna ruffle. So by ruffling, we take this 20 inch piece of mesh and we roll it out. And we find like the center point. So you want to find the center point and you want to focus on like these two strands right here. Did it zoom in for y'all? All right, so we're going to focus right here. And then we're just going to go straight up the middle. And we're going to start at the bottom. Because I want to start at the bottom because we're going to put this ruffle in here at the bottom. And then I want to take the ruffles on top and lay them on top of the ruffles on the bottom. So we're just going to open up this tine, I'm putting it right in here in the center, pushing the mesh in as far as I can. You want to make sure that tine holds that mesh in. I twist it twice and now we're going to do some what Miss Tammy likes to call kissing. So these two are going to kiss and then here on the bottom they're going to kiss. So, and there we have a ruffle. Isn't that pretty? And before I get too far in it, I need to go around and Tammy would be like, John, 
You haven't prepped your wreath bags, boy. This just makes it easier. All right, so now we're gonna take another piece of mesh. I'm just gonna ruffle, ruffle, ruffle. So that was my excitement for today. And then I don't really talk a lot about Darren and I. So my husband's a full-time engineer for Humana. And then we also have, uh, we're consultants for a company that does, um, that's in the EDI world. And so, so we have basically two businesses Darren works full time. We have Larry full time. We have two dogs, Sam and Lucy. And then up until December, we sold it. We had a hundred acre farm about three and a half hours southeast of here that I used to take care of. And um, when Larry, it was Larry's farm, when he came to live with us, we got Larry, we got the farm, and we got two rental properties. And so I was, I quit the career that I had at the time so that we could move Larry in with us and take care of him. And then I became his sole caregiver. Plus taking care of two rental properties, plus taking care of a hundred acre farm. We sold the rental properties two years ago, and now the farm is sold. Yeah, we're pretty busy, like most people. I mean, I feel like everybody has their different level of busyness. We do have help with Larry now. So um, about two years ago, the VA got funding for... Um, a program that allows the VA to pay an agency for to have someone come in and help us. So we have someone here Monday through Thursday, uh, 12 to 6. And so she actually does most, like the during the daycare from noon to 6, four days a week. Um, and then the VA also gives us what are called 30 respite days a year. And that's a six hour shift that we can have someone come in. Um, well, the VA pays for three hours on the weekdays and we pay for the other three hours. So it's not all VA paid. We probably pay for half. Um, Cause it was, we, we just, we need help. And then sometimes we still pay for additional hours when we can, but um, we haven't had our caregiver for the last two weeks. Y'all pray for her. Her name is Georgette. Uh, she's a wonderful lady and she's battling cancer and has had to have several surgeries. Um, so she was out for two weeks, but she was able to come back yesterday. And the agency that she works for, they haven't been able to get us anybody to replace Georgette because well nobody wants to work sometimes I'm like it's so frustrating here Darren and I we love to work and we work a lot but we love what we do so it doesn't feel like work and here I don't know I could go down a whole um, rabbit hole of what's going on with people not working I don't know if that's an appropriate discussion for a lab or not? Probably not. It's just frustrating. Because it's like, we have money. We want to pay people to help us. Oh, nobody wants to, nobody wants to come in and work. But we're glad she's back now. So I think she's got a couple of more surgeries in her future, but right now she's able to be here and help us and 
Oh, it's a godsend. When we first got the program, I think two years ago, it was unbelievable because Darren and I had done it completely by ourselves. Darren's an only child, so uh, and his parents are divorced, so uh, it all falls, it all fell on us. And we did it by ourselves for six years, no help, and finally. Um, that was the year the VA got like a trillion dollars or something. It was the first time they had their budget fully funded. And because of that, we, that program was refunded and then it all stopped because of the pandemic. So we didn't have help through most of the pandemic until maybe about six months ago. And when the pandemic hit, boy, whew, we've gotten used to having help. I mean, you, <laughs> when you get used to having help, it's hard when it goes away. Right, Alice? I mean, I don't think I've ever had one job my whole life. I've always had two or three jobs. I mean, I say jobs. I've never done anything that I didn't love to do. So it never did feel like work. But um, one of the things you will, as we all get to know each other more, I like to shop. And in order to shop, you have to have money. So you have to work to get money. Unless you, you know, were born into wealth, which did not happen with me or Darren. And most people. Welcome, Sally. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Y'all, if you're new, make sure you tap on the screen. So tap like, you know, just anywhere on the screen. And then hit the little buttons up there and make sure you follow my page. That way you can see when I go live. And I post little funnies throughout the day or little inspirational quotes. Um, just things to help make your day go a little bit better and spark conversation. We're making ruffles. So these ruffles were cut at 20 inches. This is 10 inch mesh, 10 inch cotton ball, poly jute mesh, cut it 10 inches or 20 inches. And we're making ruffles to put in our wreath. And we're working on a 9 by 25 raised wreath form. Hey, Taylor. No, it was just a different time. I mean, I don't know how MTSU is now. I'm hoping, I hope that MTSU is still as wonderful and serving of their students as it was when you and I worked there, Alice, because it was definitely, a, um, I never found a workplace again like I had at MTSU until I stopped working for other people and created my own businesses. Um, it was, it, I did not know that my first professional job out of undergrad and grad was going to be the best job I ever had. I did, you know, you don't know until you leave that you don't, you didn't, you know, I didn't realize that I had the absolute best bosses. I had the best working environment. I had the cream of the crop in terms of a job. Most people spend their whole lives trying to find that. I got it right out of the gate. And then when I moved on to try to advance myself, I never could match what I had at MTSU. 
It was so frustrating. Welcome, Frankie. Welcome, Barbara. We're so glad to have you here tonight. So as y'all can see, this is our base, our bottom part of our reed. See how full this already is with these ruffles? I mean, what an amazing recipe or technique or whatever. It just something so simple can fill up a wreath so easily. All right, let's move on to the top part of our wreath. But tell me a little bit about y'all. Um, I know some of y'all are retired now, but those of you who work, where do you work? What kind of stuff do you do? up. Same thing down here. And then I don't know if y'all noticed, but on the ends, what I was doing at, well, I didn't, never mind. No, I didn't. What I was supposed to do is go through and make sure that these kiss. So that even gets it even fuller looking. I forgot that step. So you want to make sure these are kiss and it pushes out that ruffle even more so that it's not hidden. How many, own, how many of you on here have made a wreath before? I just started making wreaths um, around about the first of the year. So this is all still relatively new to me. I'm still learning. So if you're just joining, we're making kind of a farmhouse style wreath tonight. We are, I'm working on ruffles right now. Here is the sign that we're going to be using. So just something cute to put on your front door or above your mantle. Yeah, Carol, go back and update them. Or upgrade them. Oh, thanks, Emily. I mean, it totally is. I mean, I'm sure... I know a couple of times people have said in our groups, you know, that... Yeah, you know, some of it has to do with us having our coaching groups. It totally has to do with us having our coaching groups. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I, I don't know what it was like years ago starting out without having people like Tammy and Damon and um, Melissa and Coach Fancy and Jordan and you know all the people there to teach us all the different techniques and all the different ways. Um, and then exactly how... 
to start our business. I mean, like the Cha-Ching Blueprint that I've been following for the last couple of months and learning all the different ways. I mean, if I'd had that, so um, I'm not new to business. So I've, my first business was at 14, sunny days, long hair. Um, and I've had businesses ever since I was 14. But I have also had brick and mortar businesses. And when I left the world of higher education, in 2011, I decided to go back into skincare. I went back to college, um, got degree, got a degree in skincare management, and worked in a couple of different skincare centers. And just like other places, I didn't like working for people. And so in 2013, once I was done with college, yeah, 2013, January 2013, Darren and I opened Norell Skincare in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, spent tens and tens of thousands of dollars opening Norell Skincare, brick and mortar location. They're on South Church Street in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And it was a blast. I absolutely loved it. Uh, I did have a business coach. Uh, I mean, because I guess just because of my love for education. If there's something you don't know, hire someone to, to help you out, just like with business coaching and creative coaching. And so I had my own skincare center. And, but that was, there was no one around me at that time doing what I was doing. So I was figuring it out all by myself, making a lot of expensive mistakes in the beginning. Oh, I don't think I, oh, there's the other curl. And whoop, lost my train of thought because I was looking for my other piece of mesh. But um, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. It was very difficult. I mean, I joined the chain. I mean, back then social media wasn't as big as it is now, and I definitely didn't know how to work it like you you do now. Um, so my social media was joining the Chamber of Com Commerce, going to every single uh, Chamber event that I could. I would go in my lab coat with my, it was embroidered with my business information on it. You know, make sure I had all my business cards. I would take all the classes, the Chamber, um, all the all the classes the Chamber would offer. I did join a business networking group called. BNI, Business Networking International. You won't be spending money on anything but ribbon now. It's so addicting. Yes. Every time I make a wreath and I go over here to my ribbon stash, Emily, I'm like, I don't have enough ribbon. I don't have the ribbon that I want. I can't tell you how many times I go to our supplier websites and fill up a cart full of the ribbon that I want. And I look at the price tag and go, not yet, John. Not yet. Not yet. You'll get there. Figure it out with what you've got. Um, but anyhow, so, you know, it was it was fun having a brick and mortar business. Um, we closed it. My husband got an amazing offer here with Humana. Um, and I couldn't tell him no. So we closed the business. But. It was wonderful. I miss having a brick and mortar business. I hope one day I can have a brick and mortar business again. There's just, for an entrepreneur, there's just something amazing having your own brick and mortar business. It's, it's just, I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's, <laughs> I haven't heard him say that. I, I can believe it. I can believe it. So if you ever have any questions about skincare, ask away. I have a lot of very expensive knowledge on the subject. And y'all, you want to know what's crazy? Half of our one of our storage rooms in our home 
is all of my equipment and machines and everything from my skincare center. Because somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, that's going to happen again. And so I need to be ready. I need to sell all that stuff and move on because I need the room to, I need the room to store wreaths. <laughs> Okay, look, we're done. And look how beautiful and full and wispy. All right, so let's get our sign on. I'm just gonna, I did not turn my glue gun on. So I should be able to go back later and put a thing of glue gun, uh, a piece of glue around there. All right, so we're going to get, I think I'm just going to need two, actually, since I'm going to put it on the side. I don't need all four. <sighs> I need to get better about deciding where I'm going to put the sign. When I first made, when I first grabbed this sign, I thought I was going to do a flat style wreath and put it in the center. But now that I did the elevated style wreath, and it's going to go on the side. So that we'll have the sign on one side and then the bow diagonally across from it on the other side. Y'all, I have not caught up on the Olympics. Does anyone know where um, where you, the U.S. is on gold count? Oh my gosh, Emily. Oh, I love that you have land and you have a barn. We had a beautiful old barn on our farm. Y'all, it was hard to walk away from that farm because it had been in my husband's family since 1880. His uncle built everything on the farm. Our great, well, I guess Larry, great, Larry's uncle, Darren's great uncle. I personally think the hardest part of a wreath is putting the sign on and getting it tied off underneath. I'm still working on mastering this technique. Like you watch people making wreaths and you see them like this. They're just under the wreath. And they're doing all of these things. Uh, where did the pipe cleaner go? And you're like, wow, what are they doing? How are they, how are they doing that so fast? Y'all, typically, I have this thing turned upside down every which way trying to get this pipe cleaner on. But today, after 30, I think I'm, this is my 31st read. Today, y'all, this morning, finishing up that wreath from last night and finishing up the sign. I think I thought, no, I didn't. I, thought, I think I could do it without looking. No, no, look under this wreath skirt. I'm still not happy with where it's at. It's still not tight enough. So we're gonna look under our skirt again. So I wish I could show y'all, but it's hard to really get the camera underneath these things. So basically what I'm trying to do is tie knots in the pipe cleaner, but tie knots to where they tighten around this, one of these bottom bars. And that sounds so easy. Oh, you're just putting a pipe cleaner underneath and you're going to you're going to tighten it and tie it. You're going to tie a pipe cleaner around a metal bar. And let me tell you, pipe cleaners, I don't think were ever intended to tie into knots. All right, let's see if I can do it. 
I've noticed it's a little bit easier if I mean, I'm not doing it right. Y'all, if you're commenting, I'm sorry. I'm not ignoring you, but I'm trying to tie off this. Alright. Alright, I think that's good. Alright, so hey y'all. Alright, so we're going to put our, so there's our sign. We're going to put our bow here. Let me check and see if I've... Hi, Penny. Welcome. Hi, Cheryl Ann. Welcome. Yes, the sign... The only time the sign is somewhat easier is on the flat style wreaths. And... Oh, my gosh! My coach is here! Y'all remember me talking to y'all about Tammy last night and tonight with Polka Dot Wreath Co.? She's in the house! <laughs> Oh, that just makes my day. I can't believe it. Whoop. All right, we're going to make a bow. You know, I not able to record the backup file. Oh, huh, we filled up my SD card. Well, Emily, last night, y'all, last night I was putting that sign on and I'm like, uh, I'll just kind of fake tie it on so that we get through the process last night. And then that's what I did this morning was go back and actually tie the sign on correctly. But tonight I actually did tie the sign on correctly so that it's actually done. All right, we're going to use our easy bow maker and we're going to make a bow. And I think I'm going to start with white on the bottom. We used white last night. So, uh, I have just begun playing with the four inch ribbons on my St. Patrick's Day wreaths. And I like the four inch ribbon, but I only have one four inch ribbon right now. The four inch ribbon is expensive. So, uh, we're just going to be playing with two and a half inch ribbon and one and a half inch ribbon. All right. I'm going to make the bow. Uh, if y'all have questions, let me know. I don't, I'll try to explain some of it. So, so I mean, I'm still learning the bow process, uh, but I will say this. If you want to make really nice bows and you have a hard time with your hands, like I do, this easy bow, easy bow maker makes it a great, great process. Tammy, if you're still here, I did your style wreath tonight with the ruffles. And look at this beautiful full wreath. All right. So we're going to twist because we want to go, we want to form the bow over. So I'm going to pull out some of this ribbon. So I want about a 10 inch tail. So this goes to eight inches. So I'm going to go about two inches past it using the measurement using the measurement here on my bow. So I want about two inches past that. I'm gonna bring my tail out forward. I'm gonna make an, an eight inch loop. And right now this ribbon, the ribbon is covering that up, but I know that that's about eight inches right there. Twist. And the part that you do in a hand bow is you pinch, you twist, pinch, twist, pinch or something. Well, this easy bow maker is doing the pinching for you. So all you've got to do is the twisting. And it really helps if you twist right. And y'all, when I first put this thing together, I'm like, I couldn't even get a strand of hair through these two. Um, pinch, twist, loop. Thank you. PTL, pinch, twist, loop. So I guess the part that this is doing is where you're, instead of having to hold it in your hand where my hand would just end up seizing up, um, this does the hold handing for you. So we pinched and we twisted and we looped. And now we're gonna pinch and twist and loop. Except this time we don't have to twist. We're just gonna pinch. We've got our loop and you wanna make sure that you're 
Loops are the same size. And then we're just going to come out 10 inches. And there we go. All right, so we've made the first part of our bow. All right, and I think next, I'm gonna go with this gray Swiss dot. So a lot of y'all I know from following people that do a lot of, um, let's see. Yeah, it's really cool, Miss Alice. All right, so this is this grayish, bluish, black Swiss dot, two and a half inch. And I just think that's really going to pull some cool colors out of the rustic, um, weathered sign. So same process as before. A little bit more except now our next loop we're going to come in about an inch we're going to pinch and twist and pull that down so we're in about an inch there so as you can see the white's about an inch taller than this ribbon all right and so we pinched and we twisted and now we're going to loop again and we're going to just pinch this time. Come down here. And I know Coach Tammy and sometimes Coach Damon, uh, well, all the coaches do. I have not experimented with the three loop bow yet. I'm just perfecting the this right now. All right, so let's come in with some of this gray and white check. Welcome, welcome. If you're new, tell us where you're from. We're so glad you're here. If this is your first time watching me, I'm John Norell with J Norell Creations. And you can tap the screen and then tap the three little dots up there to your right. And um, and follow me. That way you know when I go live. All right. Oh, this is so pretty. And y'all, like, when you start buying really good ribbon, it's so beautifully, like, I don't know what, I don't know how they make this, but it's almost like they ink it. I don't know. You can feel the thickness of the ribbon. You can feel the ink on the ribbon. It, I don't know. It's just... You know, before this, the only thing I knew about ribbon was Dollar Tree ribbon, because that's the kind of stuff that I was doing and the, the people that I was following at the time. Um, and I think, you know, for like doing the banners and stuff that I do, Dollar Tree ribbon or garlands, the different garlands that I make and sell, Dollar Tree ribbon is great for those. You would not want to use this expensive ribbon on a garland, at least not the style garlands that I make. Yes, Alice, it's wired ribbon. It's all wired ribbon. I've learned that from bow making and wreath making. You only use wired ribbon. All right, so now I want to add some brown back in. So I think that's where this is going to come in. This really cute ribbon with, it says oink and family and, well, should I, uh, maybe I should do, never mind. I think I'm gonna do this one, y'all. Yeah, with the, yeah, this is better. Don't you think this is better with the Magnolia and the Southern and the family and by the grace of God? Well, and it has, hey, hello, it has, hey, y'all. So y'all, this is better than the one with the animals, don't you think? And with this color. Hi everyone, welcome, come on in. We're so glad that you're here. We're making a farmhouse style wreath tonight with this really cute, whoop, hey y'all sign from Deco Exchange.
Okay, the other's too large. All right, so, all right, so we're gonna use this. I, this, I just, I don't know. I've got one more roll of this ribbon. I'll probably have to order some more. I love it, it's so cute. All right, twist, pinch, twist, loop. Of course, you need to twist the right way. Pinch, twist, loop. Make sure our loops match. Get some nice tails. We all like to have the tails kind of run off the end of the wreath. And then I think we'll finish Y'all, did, did I show y'all this stripe? I love this stripe. So we'll finish with this black and brown stripe. Because it's a one and a half. And so we do this final loop so that when we put our Chanel stem or pipe cleaner through to tie off our bow, we use this last little center loop to hide that pipe cleaner, Chanel stem. All right, so now the fun part, and y'all, sometimes I've done this with a zip tie, and then sometimes I do it with a Chanel stem. Tonight we're gonna do a Chanel stem, and the first thing you wanna do is push down. You wanna get this, this part really tight. You wanna keep it as tight as you possibly can. All right, so I've got, I've got my hand underneath all the ribbon. So underneath all the ribbon, I'm pushing, I'm pinching as hard as I can. And then I'm just gonna pull up. And then as soon as I pull it up and get it out between the two pegs, I pinch it and kind of, I pinch it and then I kind of angle it towards me. And then I take my pipe cleaner, put it between my fingers. I really pull on that pipe cleaner and twist and twist and twist and twist. And you get hit in the face with ribbons and it's so much fun. And you're like, okay, I created this. Woohoo! <laughs> Now what do I do with it? All right, so now we start having fun and pulling apart. And I'm not really good yet doing this in my hand. I typically will. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it to the wreath and then play with it because fluff it and zhuzh it and do all those things. So here we get to go again. We're putting our pipe cleaners through the mesh. And then we're gonna tie it off underneath. This one's a little bit easier because you can just take the two pipe cleaners and put one on one side of the wire and then one on the other side of the wire. Once you get them through the mesh. Hey, 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 Jenny. Hey, everyone. Thank you all for coming in. My name is John Norell. I'm with Jay Norell Creations. It's okay, Cheryl. We're so glad you're here. When I talked to Mary, she was headed to Target, so she must have got held up at Target. All right, so we're going to tie off this bow. So I'm just twist, twist, twisting it up. My hands are underneath right now. All right, so that should be pretty good. All right, so let's come over here and let's see where we're at. All right, let's get our tails going in one direction. I see some wreath makers, you'll see tails kind of going in all directions. I quite haven't figured that part out yet. Um, I know, I don't know. I've tried that and I don't quite understand the concept yet. I haven't watched enough videos, I guess. I'm still learning that. So I just tend to like my tails to all go in one direction. 
right now. And I've learned from watching the coaches and watching different wreath makers, you can really manhandle this ribbon. <laughs> it's like you just keep going until it does what you want it to do. Beat it into submission, basically. It's kind of funny. I really like this Swiss dot. And then sometimes it takes like, I'll get it up on my wall and play with it a little bit more. Um, I've been doing this more, like curling up the smaller ribbon. I think that's cute. And then we're going to dovetail our other ribbons. Fold it in half. As Miss Coach Tammy said, cut it towards the sunshine, or as I just cut it towards the floor. <laughs> but if you do it, if you do it right, you fold it in half and then um, I want that one longer and cut it towards the sunshine. I see some wreath makers, they'll actually like take the scissors and they start and they go in and they come back down. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not that, I'm not that talented yet. That looks like Edward Scissorhands stuff. So we're just making a lovely wreath and um, this wreath will be available in my Etsy shop once we're done making it. And if you're not familiar with my Etsy shop, uh, you can just go to www.jnrlcreations. <laughs> what the what? That's right. Uh, www.jnorellcreations.com and that'll take you directly to my Etsy shop. If you want to join my VIP email list, you can go to www.vip.jnorellcreations.com Join my VIP list and you'll get a nice little present from me by joining that email list. Uh, I'll leave it a surprise. All right. So there's our bow. And if you like any of a lot of the materials and stuff that I'm using tonight, you can get it from shoplikejohn.com. And that is my affiliate with uh, Deco Exchange. All right. So we got our sign, we got our bow. So now we need some ribbon tails. So who remembers um who remembers last night what how many inches we cut our ribbon tails at? when we used our ribbon tail boards. We're gonna use the exact same inches. Um, this is where I wish I had some solid black. I've got to buy some solid black, y'all. What do y'all think we should do the ribbon tails in? Oh, let me get something in time. Ooh, maybe I'll do the ribbon tails. to be something that's going to stand out. We can do the ribbon tails in this. Do the ribbon tails in this and I don't like the stripe on the on that. What do y'all think? Hello everyone. Thank you all for joining. We're working on this farmhouse style wreath. We've got our base done. We've got our bow finished, beautiful bow. We've got our cute sign, hey y'all. 
And now I'm trying to decide what to do for rib and tails. I could do the, oh, the blue Swiss dot? Do this, oh, I could do the blue Swiss dot and this white. What do y'all think about that? Even the white's gonna get kind of hidden by the um, hidden by the da, 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 da. I could do solid white. Hmm. Well, we're gonna go with what we got. We've got this beautiful Swiss dot with the white on top. So that's what we're gonna go with. Because I don't have all of my other colors of mesh are either St. Patrick's Day and, oh, I could, oh, hold on, hold on, hold the front door. There is green in the side. Hold the front door. Oh, but I didn't put any, I did not put in, that would look good. I did not put any, ooh, maybe this. I didn't put any green in my bow. What? The checkered and gray? These two? Nancy, these two? Typically on ribbon tails, you have a two and a half inch and you have a one and a half inch. I think I'm gonna do, all right, so you do the ribbon tails with to two, two and a half inches? Hey, y'all, y'all, let's do this. Let's see how it works. All right. Use our, oh, really? Okay, I have not seen the two, two and a half inches. Yay! Let's try something new. All right. Oh, first I need to see, like, how many am I gonna use? One, two, three, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, I think. All right. Now, probably sixteen. Sixteen sets. Hello, Janet. If you're new, this is your first time watching me. Click on your screen. You'll see three little dots up there in your top right of your screen and click follow. That way you can see me go live and we'll make more wreaths. I don't do just wreaths y'all. So you, I've made a wreath last night. We made a wreath tonight, but um, I also paint tier tray sets. So uh, we'll be painting some tier tray sets soon. I make shelf sitters. I was counting, so I can't talk and count at the same time. I'm good, but I'm not that good yet. Oh, hi, Kim. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Janet. That's so sweet. Y'all, this is just my second night going live, so I'm still learning all the things to say, like, oh, make sure you sprinkle, make sure you 
do this to follow me or um, I'm still trying to, you know, get keep all of that going through my mind. Uh, it's a lot to think about. At the same time, design and keep conversation going. And in the back of my mind going, okay, I hope my family liked the dinner that I made them that they're eating upstairs. I hope someone's cleaning the kitchen while I'm down here working. <laughs> Do y'all know that feel, feeling? Feeling? Oh, hey from Alabama. Thank you. I live in Louisville, Kentucky now, but I'm actually from Pearl, Mississippi. So I am I am a southern boy through and through. Um Love Alabama. I just love the South in general. Ooh, Northeast Iowa. All right, y'all, let's cut some dovetails. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe my husband is watching my live and he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to go in there and clean up the kitchen. Yeah, I made dinner, and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go downstairs and go live. And he's like, you're not going to eat with this? Like, you just made this big meal, and you're not going to eat? And I'm like, no, I'm going to go down there and see my friends. Well, I say big meal. It was a mushroom risotto and a steamed mixed, veg mixed vegetable medley, medley and... Um, some local farm-raised T-bones. Oh, that's wonderful, Shelby. So Kim, um, I was actually, someone asked me that the other day, or were we talking about it last, I think Darren asked me, or someone asked me, like, you know, how did I get started in this, and I, I don't, about six or seven months ago, I caught someone making a wreath. Uh, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I caught, um, I think it was Melissa Campbell was the first person I started watching. And that's Melissa Campbell with Crafty Max. And then from there, I heard Melissa talk about other people that she started watching, like Tammy, ha Tammy Harris. Hodges and Damon Oates and so then I googled and found them and so I just kind of why I honestly had no intention of making wreaths I just thought it was fascinating um I mean I I bought wreaths over the years but I've never really thought about making them and I've been kind of a crafter um I mean, I taught for 15 years, so there's all kinds of crafts that go into teaching, uh, bulletin boards and so forth. But then uh, I I had um, like signs that I'd made that you would put in your house or on your front door, door hanger signs put throughout your house, T-shirts, earrings, um, all different kind of things that I would that I had in four or five different booths um, in different places in Louisville and across the river in uh, Clarksville, Indiana. 
And the first year, 2019, I did really good. Then the pandemic hit, 2020, I mostly paid rent. I felt like I wasn't really selling stuff. 2021, I really paid rent. I wasn't really selling stuff. And so in December, I had decided to come out of my places where I had my stuff at. And I honestly thought I was, I mean, I was in the business coaching because we have another business and I utilized, I was utilizing the business coaching for that business and just to get me back refocused. So I'm just making dovetails, y'all, out of uh, Emily's Ribbon Tails. And, you know, I was in the business coaching and I, you know, admitted that I, you know, pulled out of my booths and I really didn't know where my life was going creatively. I felt like I just kind of honestly had failed. Like I tried this business for three years, you know, crafting and making stuff and to sell it in the different places that I was at. And then um, y'all, Melissa Campbell, and as well as Tammy and Damon, I bought um, I bought some wreath kits. And y'all, I bought some wreath kits first from Melissa with Crafty Max. Um, and I just sat here. I didn't do anything with them. I probably spent several hundred dollars in wreath kits. And they were just sitting here. I wasn't doing anything with them. Then I was I was watching Damon, and Damon made a flower wreath um, out of poly burlap. Uh, I'll show you. It's right here. Hold on. So. Damon Oates made this wreath on a live sometime in the December, first of January, maybe in the December. And I bought two of these kits. I don't know. There was just something about it. I'm like, this wreath is just gorgeous. It felt simple the way that Damon showed it. And I bought two of them and they arrived at my house. And even though I had probably six other wreath kits, at the time that I had not even touched. I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to figure this out. I have a wood burner. I have a cutting board, glass cutting board, tempered glass cutting board. And I'm going to figure this out. And I made it and I posted it to my Facebook page. And within 20 or 30 minutes, it, it sold. It sold y'all. And I was just like, What? Like nothing that I had been making for three years was selling that quick. <laughs> um, and it just, it just woke me back up creatively. And I went, okay, I need to, I need to pull off those other wreath kits. And then Tammy had some wreath kits that she posted on in her business. And I've been watching her in business coaching and y'all, that's how I, learned. I was watching the coaches. I mean, yes, I've been watching them for six months and kind of trying to figure out what they were doing. It was more fascinating to me than anything else. But I pulled out some wreath kits and initially probably my first eight or nine wreaths were wreath kits because I didn't know anything about wreaths. And I'm like, you know, these wreath kits, that's pretty cool. Someone's come up with all the coloring. So I can start learning how to do the coloring and how to pick a sign and okay if I've picked this sign what what ribbon do I put with this sign or what mesh do I need to put with this sign so learning by doing those kits now you know what was kind of funny a couple of weeks ago my husband at one point said so where did this kit come from and I'm like oh this isn't a kit he goes it's not a kit I'm like, no. He goes, I haven't bought kits in a while. He goes, all these you've been making, you've just been making on your own? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I know. I mean, you just got to put in, you know, you put in some work. I'm not saying everyone needs to start by making kits. But 
that that's that's how I got started. Long story. I know I I could be long winded. When I taught college, all my students felt the same way. Oh, thanks, Shelby. Yes, I mean Tammy. You know, she's she's just incredible. I mean, from what I understand, Melissa with Crafty Max, that's how she got her start was watching Tammy. Um, so many of us have gotten our starts because of Tammy. So I hope she realizes how power, powerful her voice is and how much she inspires so many of us creatives in the business. All right, so we're going to put in our ribbon tails. And like if the ribbon tails are on the bottom, you just kind of want to separate them. But like on the top, your ribbon tails can go kind of wherever and be fun and whimsical. Your ribbon tails on the bottom, you want to, you know, if you, this is up against a you know, wall or up against the door, you don't want your ribbon tails on the outside going every which direction. So you just kind of want to have them pointed out like this. So if you're new, welcome. My name is John Norrell. I'm with J. Norrell Creations. And if this is your first time here, make sure you like and follow me. Click on the picture and up on those little three dots. Click on the three dots and then follow my page. That way we can spend more time together. So that is how I got started making wreaths. And... I've had a very successful first month, I think. I mean, um, I think I'm up to 12 sales in my Etsy shop, I think. Don't hold me to that. I think it's 12. I've got five reviews already. I've had my first two custom orders from someone through my, my other company. Um, Oh, thank you, Kathleen. And so she wanted two Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras boat wreaths. And y'all, let me tell you, I wish I had gotten, I can't wait for next year to make more Mardi Gras wreaths. That's basically the, the end of the story. I had so much fun making those Mardi Gras wreaths. This table was covered in glitter. My floor was covered in glitter. I was covered in glitter. You can still find Mardi Gras glitter throughout the house. I just, I loved it. I can't wait to be uh, head of the game next year and be able to get the Mardi Gras supplies and make more Mardi Gras wreaths. It, it, oh God, I don't know. It was just so much fun. Those wreaths were beautiful. Um, if you scroll through my Facebook page, you can see them. Um, but they were just, ah, oh, they were so much fun. So in looking at this sign, I'm wishing I had probably added some green, but I didn't even, I don't really have, I should have added green, but that's all right. What? No. There are really that many people? Holy cow. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. We're just making a little old wreath. Once I get this up on the wall, I'll look at it some more. I may come back and add some green. rock star status ah. y'all we have a place that I found well I found it by mistake so prior to making reads um, in my other crafting world I was a Dollar Tree junkie I mean like here's a project 
from Christmas. All Dollar Tree. I was showing this last night. This is one of the Dollar Tree Christmas gnomes. I have, this is the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree sh shoes. And so this was a project that I was going to, I was, my intention was to have 36 of these made for my booth at Christmas time, but then I ended up closing that booth. So I love the Dollar Tree. I love Dollar Tree stuff. Um, I'm not upset about them going to a dollar twenty-five because have y'all seen the Easter stuff? You know, I watched the CEO's live when um, or maybe I saw a press conference or something. Anyhow, when he was talking about like what they were going to be able to do with the dollar twenty-five increase and the quality and the stuff that was going to be coming out at that dollar twenty-five price point, have y'all seen the Easter stuff? I mean, holy cow! So now that I am buying supplies from um, different suppliers now and wholesale kind of stuff, I'm not in the Dollar Tree Dollar Trees as much. Um, but prior to that, I would I mean y'all would I would shop for everybody for the Dollar Tree. There's four or five of us that are friends that we all shop for each other based upon they li we live in different states and. Oh, I'm looking for this. Will you go here and look for it and go there and look for it? We'll box it up and ship it to each other. So that was, yeah, a lot, a lot of time spent in Dollar Trees. So I was on a Dollar Tree hunt and I think I was, it was a friend's wedding. Uh, it was Carol. It was Carol's wedding. If Carol's still here, it was her daughter's wedding. And we were searching for stars, the chunky wooden stars. And I went every, I mean, different states <laughs> looking for these chunky wooden stars. Carol and I have never actually met in person, but we've been friends now, I guess, for a year and a half or so uh, through our mutual friend, Mary, with It's a Chalk Thing. And I stumbled upon a store in... New Albany, Indiana, called Ben Franklin Crafts. And I don't know if y'all have ever heard of... Oh, thank you, Mary. Here's my friend Mary with It's a Talk Thing. And so I found this store called Ben Benjamin Franklin Crafts. Well, I think it used to be a chain store. My friend Mary was telling me that it used to be a big chain store down in Florida for a craft store. Well, there's still, I guess a couple of loan holdouts and I like to go there now because they actually have Polydeco mesh, the name brand, the good mesh. And they have, um, really good, the RG ribbon and the different really good ribbon companies. So what I may do is go there tomorrow and See where they're at. Because well, last time I was there, they had the same ribbon as before. So they don't, it's a older craft store. It kind of reminds me of going into an old Fred's or an old Rose's. Um, so they don't turn over stock very often. So Benjamin Franklin Crafts was probably like the craft store in its heyday before places like Michael's and Hobby Lobby and Joann's came along. You can definitely tell that whenever it was popular, it's it's been a while. But I just love that. I mean, I love that like on the front of their store, it, it says this is a single owner craft store. It's not a chain. So I like going there and supporting them. <laughs> Kathleen, I'm already, I mean, two, let's see, my, by my second visit, I was on a first name basis with a manager. They get so excited when they see me come in because I carry out so much mesh and so much ribbon. Um, they started a new rewards program and I am in the process of teaching them all how to use it because I'm shopping enough to actually care about my rewards. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's the one thing I will encourage y'all, whether it's a chain store or a local mom and pop store, get to know the managers of the store. Some of the way I would get the Dollar Tree stuff that I would be able to get is because I befriended some of the managers and they would let me know. I mean, believe me, like even in those chain stores, if you've worked retail, I worked retail in high school and college, they all have sales quotas and all the stores compete with each other. I'm going to use this other, um, I need to pull that sign over. They all compete with each other. So they want you to come in and shop with them. Because they want to meet their sales figures. So if if they know you're somebody who's going to come in, they don't care if you're coming in Dollar Tree and buying 500 or something or whether you're buying one. They just want the stuff off the shelves. Get to know those managers and have them call you when something comes in that you're looking for. There we go. All right, back to time signs. All right, that's better. All right, let's see here. Here's a good one. We had it pretty well. Yeah, Kim, there's, there, there is one in New Albany, Indiana. So I don't know. I haven't looked to see, like, how many other others there are out there. Um, but it's a very quaint store. And on the last Thursday of the month, if you buy one of their reusable totes, every, well, it used to be, I guess, anything that you could get in that tote was 20% off, but now they just let you fill up your cart and they just go ahead and give you 20% off whatever you get in your cart. So I don't know if all the stores... Oh, GK, you've got a Ben Franklin. How cool. Just finishing up these ribbon tails. I'm going to have to get some more of this bluish, grayish. Swiss dot ribbon. I really like it. What's everyone's favorite style of wreath? Do you like farmhouse? Do you like more boho? Do you like contemporary? Um, contemporary modern? Boho? Farmhouse? Um, more classic? Traditional style colors? Mary Love's Farmhouse. Yes, you do love cuteness. Oh, Jane, you live in the country. Jane, do you have like a big farm?
Oh, welcome, Carol. I'm glad you're here. Oh, thank you, Karen. Y'all, if you love this sign, you can actually get it um, from Deco Exchange. And you can use my affiliate link, and that is just shop like John, S H O P L I K E J O H N dot com. And they have these in the 10 inch and the 12 inch. Oh, you do live on a farm. I don't know if you heard earlier, we just sold our farm in December. So we live in suburbia. So we lived more inside of the city of Louisville uh, when we first moved here from Tennessee. And I did not like it. I'm like, get me out of here. I wanted to go out more towards what's called here Oldham County, which is... <laughs> Kathleen, you, you know, girl, I got I to gotta, I gotta rake in that money. Buy, buy more ribbon. Um, but my husband wanted closer to the city, so we compromised where we're at now. We're near an area called Pee Wee Valley uh, in Kentucky, right out... We're right on the edge of Louisville and Oldham County, Jefferson County and Oldham County. But um, I would love for us one day to be able to be back on a lot of land and have a big sprawling southern ranch. <laughs> Karen, you can do this. You can do this. Um, if you want to be a part of my VIP group, uh, you just go to www.vip.jnorellcreations.com. Give me your email address, and then I've got a beautiful gift for you once you sign up and join my VIP group. Hi, Janice. Welcome. Well, guys, this is it. This is what we made tonight. Let me see if I can. We've got our Hey Y'all sign. We've got our cute bow. We've got all of our ribbon tails. Um, let's see if I can zoom out anymore. Oh, there we go. I can see more of it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It was fun. And thank y'all all for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you can, before you go, make sure you like and follow my page. And um, as far as I know, I should be here again tomorrow night. And um, I usually will post on my page and let y'all know before, before I go live. All right. All right. Thank you all. Enjoy your night.